scrub typhus. So, what is that exactly? Well, scrub typhus is a mite-borne disease, which means it arose and is transmitted through mites. It is acute, which is the opposite of chronic, suggesting it can be treated and cured. And it is an infectious disease, as it is caused by the infection of a bacteria. The name scrub typhus comes from the terrain in which it is thought to have originated. The term scrub describes the terrain between woods and clearings. This word does not accurately describe where scrub typhus can be transmitted, as some noted endemic areas can also be sandy, semi-arid, and mountainous. The term typhus comes from the Greek word typhos, which described a hazy or smoky mind state as seen in infected hosts. The disease was first described in Japan in 1930 and occurred as a few isolated cases. The disease was not commonly known until World War II when there were severe endemics. Soldiers having spent a lot of time in areas with the mite vector of the bacteria gave rise to many cases of scrub typhus. The rise of the disease during the Second World War sparked an interest of the medical world to study the disease and the mites that transmitted it. The U.S. also had many troops in Vietnam at the time, and therefore the Western world quickly made advances on researching the disease. The photos you see here are advertisements seen during the Second World War, giving awareness to the general public as well as basic instructions on prevention. So now that we know how the disease started its spread, let's see where it got to. This infectious disease is endemic to 13 million square kilometers of the Asia-Pacific Rim, seen in this photo here. The gray areas highlight the endemic presence of the infection. It occurs primarily in rural and suburban areas, which would hold critical habitats for the mite, where it ex excludes cities as they do not commonly hold the vector mite. Outbreaks of the disease are observed to occur with the changing seasons, although they vary as it is a result of the actual climate, and not the general season. The disease becomes more prevalent when the mites thrive in warm and humid climates. Most cases of scrub typhus go undiagnosed, and the disease is not commonly tested for, but rather the doctor would have to test specifically for the bacteria. In the areas highlighted in the previous map, we see on average incidents of 18 to 23 percent. In non-endemic areas, such as our western world, we see scattered isolated cases brought primarily back from travelers. So, who can we blame for all of this? Well, the causative agent is a bacteria known as Orientia tsutsugamushi. The term tsutsuga is Japanese for illness, and mushi is Japanese for insect which is essentially what scrub typhus is, an insect-transmitted disease. Well, closely related to an insect. The bacteria itself is an obligate intracellular pathogen, which means it requires a host cell to live and reproduce. This bacteria also has many serotypes, making it difficult to create a vaccine or to build immunity, as if you become immune to one serotype of the bacteria, you are still at risk of infection from the other serotypes. The bacteria is transmitted to us by an arachnid vector known as the chigger. The chigger transmits the disease by biting through our skin. Chigger is the common name of the larval stage of leptotrombidium mites. The larval stage in which we are interested is the only parasitic stage of this mite and therefore is the one transmitting the bacteria. So, to orient ourselves taxonomically, the mite comes from the genus leptotrombidium which belongs to class Arachnida, subclass Acari, order Trombidiformes, and family Trombiculidae. Its life cycle is very simple, involving eggs to larva to nymph to adult. The mite undergoes simple metamorphosis. One distinguishing feature of the larva is that they only have six legs in comparison to its eight-legged nymph and adult. When the chigger bites our skin with its chelicera, it creates an area of hardened skin known as a stylostome which acts as a tube. It releases digestive enzymes, digesting our cells, and then proceeding to suck up the digested tissues through the stylostome. Contrary to popular belief, the chigger does not actually feed on our blood. Okay, so, you think you may have scrub typhus? So what now? Well, the most obvious presentation of this disease is the presence of an eschar, which is this scab-like lesion. Secondarily, it presents itself as a sudden and painful headache, 
could be chills, fever, myalgia, as well as a cough. Although not commonly the doctor's first suspect, scrub typhus can be diagnosed using the presence of an eschar, blood tests, tests of renal and liver function, x-rays of the chest, as well as ultrasounds of the abdomen. If you do have scrub typhus, however, fear not, for there is indeed a treatment. It can be treated by our most loved antibiotic, doxycycline. Over a period of a week to two weeks, you can be cured of the bacteria. If you are pregnant or a child, you may be prescribed a less aggressive antibiotic known as azithromycin. In the case that you are experiencing drug resistance, any of the antibiotics can be paired with rifampicin to effectively rid of the bacteria. So if this doesn't sound fun to you, luckily there are always ways to prevent and control. Basically, just avoid the mites. Avoid where they live, but if you must, be sure to cover all access to skin or orifices. Alternatively, you could just eliminate all of the mites with chemicals. More information on the disease can be found at any of these informative websites. Thank you.